We are going to Home Depot to get a, uh, a wheelbarrow and a shovel and a pick, because Matt doesn't own any of those items. Where's the uh, very important person parking, Mike? I have the Matt placard to hang from here. Yeah. I need that. I need that. It gets us up close and gets us free suckers and, and hot dogs. Hot you know? Dogs. Yeah, you get, you, yeah. You, Matt's got reward points here for hot dogs and suckers. You get, he gets special parking because he, he's bought so many. I'm telling you, they know him by name. It, when we walk in here, watch, they're gonna be like, where's Matt? Uh, I have a hot dog ready. They, they, they can't. Yeah, just, yeah, yeah, yep, yep. No, usually he gets it on the way out. They see him coming in, when he comes out, it's ready. To, oh, he's on his way out, and then they hand they it to him. Yeah, hand it to him because he's got, he's got suckers in one hand, hot dog with sauerkraut on the on the other hand. He finishes off because he likes to finish off his meals with sweets. Yeah. So he's, he's hot dog, and then we're on the way. He's unwrapping the sucker as just light bite goes in. Yeah, that's pretty. Pretty cool. Garden center, I believe that's where the wheelbarrows are kept. What I'm looking for is the real wheelbarrow. It's a Miller. OG spec wheelbarrow, it's blue. It's a Miller. None of those homeowner special made of plastic with wood handles. Those break. I left mine in California, unfortunately. Oh, here we go. Oh man, I don't think they have that my kind of wheelbarrow, Mike. Ah, man. No, these are not the good ones. These are junk. These are junk. Absolute trash, wheelbarrows. Oh, wait a minute. No, no. No, no. Shoot. Wow, they don't have good ones. I can't believe it. Nobody wants these. It's, uh, they're all blue, steel handles. These and it's and it's meant for you know dumping concrete. It's got a real long nose on it, tapered. Doesn't have these wood handles. This is trash. This is this is garbage. This is good for your potting soil and such, but yeah, not good for what we're doing. Dang it. That's uh, unfortunate, Mike. I really like to film in here in Home Depot. Yeah, this is good. yeah, yeah. Well, it's you know it's very tropical feeling in here. Look at the palms and plants and such. Let's get online here and find out what we got. Let's see. Ace Hardware has it. You know, well, we hope that's it. That's the kind we want. Look at that bat beauty, huh? That's a gem. It is. That's the kind we want right there. Okay. Last forever. Yep. Okay. Buy it for life. That's right, Mike. I should have brought mine from California. A little disappointed. It just shows some room on the trailer, Mike. We'll get another one, Mike. Yeah, here we go. Lady Lake open till 6 p.m., but do they have in stock? That's two hundred dollars now. When I bought mine, it was like a hundred bucks. Yeah, times have changed. But you know, this inflation's really hitting hard right now, and that's and that's no BS. It's it's pretty bad. <laughs> well, at least Miller's making some money on wheelbarrows. Let's see, unavailable in Lady Lake. Oh, item not available nearby. Mike, should I do that? <laughs> should I check Obsessed Garage Marketplace? See if we have one. Man, that's a bummer. Um, really need one. Wow, how does they not, how do they not answer the phone? Yes, I'm calling because I'm trying to find a, a wheelbarrow. Um, what I'm looking for is an all steel wheelbarrow, like a Miller. Yeah, no, I just want a single wheel, all steel, steel handles, if they're blue, generally they're a contractor's wheelbarrow. You have those. All right, great, we'll, uh, we'll come over then, thank you. All right, bye. Ace says they have a mic, I'm disappointed, no, uh, no hot dogs, no suckers. Yeah, this guy is, uh, he's maxed out right now, Mike. Huh? That's it. You know, maybe we should buy one of these. Get around. It'd be a lot more convenient, you know? I think we can probably get around quicker. We need one with a, a two-stroke Yamaha on it, though, so we can, we can uh, modify it, Mike. Yeah. I don't, I don't think Matt would be too keen on the Rolls-Royce front end, though, on them. No? Uh, no. I, uh, no. You fact, could do uh, an M3 front end. <laughs> oh, yeah, that'd be sweet. Yeah, we should try that. We're at, we're at Ace Hardware. Hopefully, uh, they're going to pull pull through here. I don't think this is very promising, Mike. No, I think the uh, the conversation I had on the phone seemed a little more positive than 
<laughs> this one here. I think, yeah, it went from yes, we have them to, I think we, oh no, these are not the ones. Yeah, Mike, uh, uh, this, this is not, this is not what we're looking at, Mike. This is, uh, this is, we gotta, uh, mm -hmm. geez. Oh, I guess I'm gonna have to show him a picture. Let's go back in the out. Well, let's go over here. Not good, Mike. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, not comfortable with my decision. I'm wasting time coming out here. But we're looking for this. Steel wheelbarrow, Miller. Mm, no. I can order one. Yeah, that's, uh, yeah, okay. Yeah. All right, thank I you. I was thinking you were needing a smaller one. Sorry. Oh, no, no, that's why when I said contractor wheelbarrow, that, that one there is uh, like yeah, for a potting soil. Yeah. yeah, okay, thanks. Yikes. <sighs> Man, that was a goose chase, Mike. Yeah, yeah I thought you meant a little one. But, but, so Mike, does contractor grade wheelbarrow mean get the little one? Yeah. Yes, hi, I'm looking for a, uh, a wheelbarrow. I have a true value item number. Can you tell me whether or not you have it in stock? Um, can you hold for a moment, please? Sure, she's gotta put her teeth in, Mike. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> it's not easy out here. That's all I want, just a contractor's small quarter yard wheelbarrow. <laughs> with a uh, two inch diameter skateboard tire. Jeez, man. Sir? Yes. Can I get the, the number? I'm gonna try, I, I, can I get the number? I'm sorry. 272404. 274704? Oh boy. 272404. Okay, one moment please. Thank you. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> oh my God. She's, oh, just, she jarbled those numbers and added a few there. Wow. Uh, two seven two four zero four. Are you? Yeah, two four seven zero six one three. No, ma'am. No threes. No sixes. Oh man. Uh, she's gonna come back. Yeah, we've got that pot and soil for you. Yes. Mike, this is, uh, I don't think there are any of these in Florida. I took the wind out of my sails, Mike. Yeah, kind of sad now. Yeah, I am a little sad. I had this vision of using my contractor's grade wheelbarrow, OG spec blue, Miller, six cubic foot, steel handled, no flat tire wheelbarrow. And now you can't. No, I can't. Now I've got to use a true temper, what looks like a wheelbarrow for gardening soil. Steel handle, sure. So that way you can leave it outside and won't rust, but it won't, uh, I should say, won't rot. It'll just rust. The, the Miller has tube steel handles. And uh, it's angled just right for, for dumping concrete. Jeez. I feel like I need to cry. It is, Mike. Yep. I mean, I guess uh, hopefully they have uh, plastic shovels right next to this wheelbarrow. Well, in that case, you might be asking yeah. too much. Some rubber nails. Yeah. yeah. Well, contractor grade. Okay. And uh, when can you have that one? Uh, Thursday. Thursday. Okay. I'll tell you what. I'll call you back. Let me look it up, and then I'll call you back if, if we want to go that route. Okay. All right. Appreciate it. Thank you. Bye. I'm not driving, by the way. We're parked. Yeah, this, we're this is this is a movie. This is blue screen. It's just blue screen. After effects. <laughs> Mike, this amazing editing you've done here. It really is. Oh, there it is. That is not the same. You said it's the same. It's Mike. the same, but that's not. It's the same, but not the same. <laughs> it has steel handles. I'll give them that, but it is not the same. Yeah, they are totally different. Yeah, it's a round tub instead of a squared tub. Yeah, it's not the same. And I don't know, Mike. I see some wheelbarrows out there. I see some plastic ones. I see some dual wheeled ones for people with no arm strength. They hang on to the, so they don't, you know, they balance sort of kind of by themselves. Big a big disappointment, but we're gonna do what we can, Mike. We're gonna, we're gonna make use of what, we, what, we've, what we've been, uh, the cards we've been uh, dealt, Mike. 
This one definitely not good here. This is a wiggly woggly. Yeah, the dual wheels, huh, Mike? So you don't even need to balance that. You can carry one one handed operation, Mike. It's not up to the standard, Mike. No, no. See, I saw the blue one. This, this one here is plastic, too. Look at that. That's real nice. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they're a metal. Yeah. Hey, guys, you got to call me? Yeah. Yeah. That's what we're talking about. This is it, huh? This is the new one. Mm hmm. Man, all right. Wow, nobody's ever showed up with a can of camera to take a picture of one. Well, we're uh, we're doing a little filming for yeah. cool. a YouTube channel, but yeah. All right. All right. Well, I guess that'll have to do it. Uh, no one has a Miller anywhere. I, I don't know what the contractors do around here for wheelbarrows. Now I've called everybody. That, but that's a wood handle. Those are yeah. garbage for contracting. Uh, a little subpar, but that'll work. It's, a, I mean, it's a nice wheelbarrow for a homeowner, but I. Yeah, for a heavy duty homeowner, but I, yeah. I know what you're saying. You know. That's it, Mike. We've got our $137 True Temper heavy duty homeowner's wheelbarrow. Okay, yeah. Mike, get the job done here. It, it will, Mike. It'll do it. A run flat tire on it, Mike. You know, it's going to do the job. I'm probably being too critical. What am I going to do? Do we need to get our nails done, Mike? I knew need. I, I've chipped a couple with all this construction work. All right, so we've uh, made our adventurous uh, trek to find a wheelbarrow and a shovel. Didn't get the wheelbarrow we wanted, but this is gonna this is gonna do. So what we're doing is I'm going to pull out the sandy soil to make room for the concrete because the concrete, the top of the concrete for the uh, for recess in the lift is just a hair below where the bottom of this current slab is. So I'm going to take this down about five and a half inches because the um, Nussbaum says they want a four inch minimum slab. We're going to go a little thicker than that. I'm probably going to go four and a half to five. Um, we are going to take it down, you know, at least, you know, five and a half inches um, pour. And then I'm leaving some room height because we're going to, Matt was talking about, I, I'd suggest tiling at least the uh, perimeter here. That's why we wanted nice straight cuts. We're going to tile that to finish it off. I'll end up thin setting where this is chipped up a little bit, pulling the, pulling the concrete out. Um, anyway, so we're going to probably tile the bottom too. So I'm going to leave a little room for that. So it looks finished, so that way when it lifts up, it looks cool. So anyway, next thing is get rid of all this soil all out of here, and uh, then we'll be putting some rebar in and getting ready to pour concrete. This is nice and easy, Mike. Yep. temper workhorse here it's it's one of those things you just have to trust me it's like you have to trust Matt Krenzel's better same thing with the Miller <laughs> you just have to trust me it's better all right ready the unknown in the coral snake infested jungle with the uh, rock pythons alligators coral snakes crocodilian Yeah, we'll cover them up at least. It'll take a minute to get them dug back out. All right. That's one of about 20 loads. All right, so we've got it down uh, approximately five and a half inches below the bottom of this existing slab. So I'm gonna pour it a little heavy. And so I've got this all set. The one thing I'm gonna do that I don't think Nussbaum really 
has had to, has recommended or or talked about is I'm going to undermine or undercut the soil underneath the existing slab. So I'm going to take out probably three inches back, probably about to there, all the way around, so that when I pour this, it'll key in under the existing slab. And for me, it's just peace of mind. It gives it more stability. That way, there's no way it can ever tip or do anything crazy because it's keyed into the existing slab. You can't really make this a monolithic pour unless you cut way out here and pour a new slab around it and pour everything together. So this, that's the best, next best thing. And um, I'm also going to do what this slab doesn't have rebar now, but I am going to put rebar in. I'm probably going to put three, uh, three eighths bars running long ways and some three eighths running the other way, probably 18 inch on center going this way. Um, one probably in the middle here, one out here and one out here. And, uh, that'll give it some extra strength too. So it should be good. Next step is going to get some rebar. Oh, well, first I'm going to undercut all the way around where I'm going to key it in. Then we'll get some rebar and some Dolby blocks. Dolby blocks are little concrete two by two square that you put underneath the rebar to keep the rebar up off the bottom of the soil. So that way it's about center of slab. Yeah. And then we'll get that set. And then we're uh, pretty much ready to pour concrete. Brakes work, Mike. Yeah, those are good. Pretty good. I hear sirens coming, Mike. We might have a uh, silver hair down. Home Depot run. I try to go to the smaller places like lumber yards or white cap construction supply, which is actually now owned by Home Depot. But I try to go to the smaller places first. Yeah, absolutely. And plus, you know, I don't like box stores. Look at that, huh? Quart quart <laughs> These are air hose, Mike. You don't need Prevo, you need this quarter inch Husky brand yeah. made in Sri Lanka. OG spec blue. OG spec blue. Oh no, made in China. So that, that might be, I think that's below Sri Lanka. Look at these, Mike, reels, hybrids, hybrid air. Hi now what's hybrid about it? It's, it's air and water mix. You can use air. air and water mix, huh? Yeah, that's nice. Some ratcheting tie down straps that you can, I think these are one time use straps. Oh, $6.88. You know, I mean, if you don't care about what you're tying down, you might as well use these. No Adobe blocks, Mike. Maybe they don't even use rebar, Mike. You need the complete solution. You can't just carry parts of it and not the rest. Yeah, they're not gonna be over here, Mike. I guess we're buying rebar and we go get the Dolby block somewhere else. You know, I threw away half a pallet of them at home too. I had a bunch. You know, Mike, I should have brought everything. I, I assume Florida had the same stuff, you know. They have a lot of cinder block though, since, since everything's made out of cinder block here. So the plan is nobody locally carries Dobies. So I'm gonna make some out of this here cinder block. There's plenty of these in Florida. Next thing you know, we don't make rebar anymore. We discontinued rebar. We no longer need rebar. We've discontinued concrete. Uh, we just use sand now. For one, Home Depot, or anywhere for that matter, if you use a cart, freaking put it away. I'll leave it around the parking lot so it can roll into somebody's car. It is, you need the exercise anyway. You gotta, you know, you, you, it's how you stay in shape. So our rebar is cut. It's placed about where it's going. So next thing is I've got to I've got to tie the rebar. And uh, we had to buy a cinder block, as you probably already saw. Um, so I'm going to cut that up and use that for a, a, a basically a, a makeshift Dolby block because there's nobody around has them. I don't. Know, I guess there's a shortage. So I'm going to do it that way. And uh, yeah, next step, tie it and get it up off the ground. So 
Typically, Adobe blocks are, depending on the thickness of the slab, they're either two inches or three inches, right? So if you're gonna do a six inch slab, you buy a three inch Adobe, so the rebar's dead center. Uh, two, and a, two inch would be for a four inch slab, typical homeowner, you know, patio or whatever. So we're making it a little thicker. So uh, I'm about five inches, so I made these about two and a half. Um, anyway, so I've already cut up some. Like I said, I was wearing a respirator earlier and I can't talk when I wear those. So um, I'm gonna make this last cut, kind of show you guys what I'm doing. They're just kind of random. I made them all about the same size. And most important thing is they're all the same height. So I'll cut this one, show you, show you what I was doing, and then, then we'll get inside and start putting everything together. But anyway, you get the idea. They're uh, two and a half inches thick. They'll just keep the mat up off the ground. I mean, you can you can do it another way. You can put the mat on the ground, make yourself a little hook as you're pouring. You're you're pulling up the mat, trying to center it in the in the pour. But I'm doing this all by myself, so this is much easier just to do it this way. That way, it's there's no guesswork in it. And we really do want the mat in the center of the pad. So this will this will work the best. And I'm uh, dirtying up Matt's uh, Matt's angle grinder, but. We'll clean it off, get it a little detail before we put it away, huh, Mike? That's right, Mike. Yeah, we don't want to put it like this. He'll be upset. Although it does kind of lend some credibility to the, you know, tools. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And so this is uh, can be bought in the OG store. Actually, I love this. I have my own at home. I should have probably brought it so I didn't mess mats all up. But yeah, these are great. So I've already got the sleeves cut and taped. So these, after I pour the initial pour at this elevation, which is roughly right at the bottom of this slab. These will, these will set in here like this. This one will set in here. This will be the sleeving to come from, a hydraulic lines to come from one side of the scissor lift to the other side and connect the two. So that'll go there. And then this is the sleeve, which is for the, the lift to the control unit. So same, same scenario. I'm gonna pour all this, then I'll set this in and I'll grout all these in with, with high strength grout. Um, I just have them all set just to try to get a step, be a step ahead. But these will these will come out for when we pour, and then after the after I pour, I'll put them back in and get everything set up, get it grouted. So that's kind of what I'm using three inch thin wall, so it's non pressure, not three inch PVC uh, pressure pipe. This is just drain pipe, so it's the thinnest wall, which is what you want. You don't want anything too big in diameter, and and this is easy to cut, and this is all you need for sleeving. And then get a little 90 turned up. It's big enough that I can get a wire fish through get the hydraulic lines tied off on it and pull them through, no problem. And then what I'll do is, the 90 sticks up just above, because we don't want to cut too deep, there's no reason to uh, here. So what I'll do is after I pour, I'll just cut this off flush with the flush with the, the pad here and, and then the lines will come up right. The unit control unit will sit right over top of this. So the lines will come right up inside and connect. These are very nice scissors. What do you think? I mean, these are top grade. I have never used a. Six hundred fifty or seven hundred dollar pair of scissors. I actually I have. I used these once before when I was uh, I was trying to cut nails with it. But uh, my kid, I wasn't that. I really wasn't. <laughs> no, but I did cut plastic with them. They're pretty nice. I don't know if I would ever justify spending six hundred fifty dollars or one pair of scissors. But I, I see that they're yeah. they're Japanese made. Nicely, uh, Very nice. I mean, they cut really well. These would be great for uh, if you wrap presents for a living. I guess this would be what you want, right? This is your work. This is this is it. This and tape, right? The best 3M tape and then these scissors. So we're going to cut some plastic now. Anything so special about this plastic? It's just clear. I bought what they had was four mil. Uh, otherwise I had to get like a six mil. I had to buy a huge roll and we don't need to do that. This is, we're not going to be walking on this. You, you, the thicker the plastic, the better. It's a more, uh, you know, less prone to puncture if you're going to be walking on the, the area before you pour. But I'm not going to walk in this. So I'm just going to put this down, tape it to the existing uh, moisture barrier that's underneath, and then, uh, and then we'll set our dobies on it and our rebar, and and then we won't touch it again until we pour. So it, it's it's going to be it's going to do the job. bring this down so I'll basically get it taped off in a few spots and then go around and tape the whole thing and this is just to prevent moisture from coming through the soil into the slab keeps the slab nice and dry 
because it is pretty moist soil here. And this is, and I did verify this soil is, it's really, really compacted. Um, so it's, I'm, I would bet my life that it's not gonna settle. Okay, so we got our plastic in, we were our moisture barrier. Or, um, we did, and I went two and two layers simply because this, the plastic wasn't wide enough to go all the way up and tie into the plastic on both sides. So anyway, got two two layers, which is more is better than less, right? So rebar is already cut. I showed you already. I cut the adobe blocks out of uh, center block. So I'm gonna tie the tie the rebar, get it all in place, and then we'll we'll set it on adobe blocks and basically it'll be ready to pour concrete tomorrow. So we're gonna do that now and, uh, and it'll probably take another, probably 45 minutes or so. And you can kind of watch the process, it's, it's super easy. I've got some special wire ties that are for, for tying rebar, makes it real easy. So what I do is I double these up, I'll, I'll show you how I do it, but these make it fast. This is for, if you're tying a bunch, uh, don't really need them on this, but if you're tying a bunch, this is the trick. So get this off of here. So basically, this will wrap, save my fingers the rebar, do this to it, right? And then this hook goes in, right? And then you basically spin the hook like this and it ties around the rebar. I'm not gonna go too tight because I'll squeeze my finger off, but I'll show you how that works. A lot of concrete experts. The, guy, the guys that are, um, yeah, I, I saw a guy one time, you know, when I, had some concrete work. This is how he did it. Or, you know, it's all good. Doesn't bother me. It hurt my feelings. This is how I do it. Three, so. Well, yeah, you want it a grid pattern that's evenly spaced so that it works better. Yeah, if you have a big space, you're liable to get a crack in that spacing. So if you put them evenly, it's less prone to crack or move, but. Yeah, you want it symmetrical. Usually it's like on a 12 foot or a 12 inch or an 18 inch or a 24 inch grid pattern. Some cases much closer, like when you're doing multiple layers and sometimes it's like six inches. But yeah, for this, we're going about 15 inches, I think is what I did. It's because we have, it's an odd length. So. Thing to note is that the layout for the anchor bolts, the anchor bolts are nine inches off center, off either side. So what we try not to do is put a rebar where we're gonna be drilling an anchor bolt. So I'm keeping them about three inches, or about, actually probably about five inches from the inside of the slab, which from the edge of here, it's about two inches, which will, our anchor bolt will be out somewhere out here. Cause you don't wanna to have to drill into rebar and drill through it, it's a pain in the butt, it takes extra time. So, and, and sometimes you can't even get through it. So um, I'm keeping them just off of the outside edge, just enough so that the, the uh, anchor bolts won't, they won't interfere with anchor bolts. So what I like to do is just do every every other and get it kind of set up, and then I'll go back and tie every every uh, intersection. I really only have to use one of these ties, which is a little easier to get going, but I like, I like running two. So this is all tied. Took about you know, seven, eight minutes, and now we're gonna we're gonna put in the the blocks under here, the adobe our, our homemade adobe blocks to get it up off of the up off the substrate, and then uh, this side will be done. Then we'll just do exactly the same thing on the other side. So what we'll try to do is just evenly space them. Um, they don't have to be perfect. You just want it off the ground, is all. Just so the concrete can flow underneath. It'll, you know, this is about the middle, right? Because I have the same distance here and here. Concrete's roughly getting poured to the bottom edge of this slab. 
So basically, you just want to elevate the rebar so it's about center of the slab. Yes, yeah, so normally Dolby blocks come with a, a wire sticking out that you would tie around the rebar, and that's handy, but I'm just going to be careful not to disturb the, the, the rebar when I'm pouring in here because I'm going to end up wheelbarrowing all this in anyway. So I'll be careful just not to slide it around. It'll be fine. So rebar's in, well, moisture barrier's in, rebar's in, dobies are in, and we are ready to pour. So we get concrete coming tomorrow. It's gonna be a five sack, 3,000 PSI mix, and uh, we'll get capture that on the next episode. Uh, once that's in, we'll get that poured, and then we'll uh, set our sleeving in. I'll get those grouted in, so that's done, and then we can, uh, we're gonna end up tiling the, uh, the faces of the uh, cut slab, and We'll capture that in another video and then the, the lift install after that. So it's coming together. Probably got another, I don't know, maybe a week. I want to let the concrete set a little while before we sit the, sit the lift in here so it's not too green. So probably got another week and we'll be setting the lift in.